Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the younger brother of the Ishin Wizard TS215, the TS130. In this video I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up, and then head the doors and test it out. At the moment of shooting this video, this quadcopter is available only as a plug and play version, which means it doesn't come with any receiver, but according to the box, later on it might be available as a bind and fly version. Inside the box you can find two sets of Dalprop Cyclone T3056C propellers, which are in my experience perform great and also very durable propellers, a bag with zip ties, two carbon fiber wrenches, a battery bottom plate, extra screws, nuts for the motors, and last but not least, the TS-130 itself. As you can see the TS-130 looks like the baby brother of the Ishin Wizard TS-215 which has seen better days, I crashed it I think about 2 months ago and it didn't survive the crash, I still think that this is a pretty good quadcopter but it has a big flaw in its design which is the bottom plate over here, so I don't really like that the flight controller is built to this board and luckily it's not the case with the Ishin Wizard TS-130 so it features three separate boards for the ESC, flight controller and for the VTX. Now let's go over the components of the TS-130. The bottom board of this all-in-one stack is a 20 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 ESC, the middle board is an Omnibus F4 flight controller and the top board is the 40 channels VTX with a selectable output strength of 25, 100 and 200 mV. In addition it supports smart audio and the boards are connected to each other unfortunately by pins which is not a very reliable way of connecting the boards together and that's the reason most of the coin boards are not using this method anymore. The micro FEV camera is the Foxeer Aero Micro Pro which is an excellent FEV camera and the motors are 1507 4100 KV motors. The TS-130 weighs 133.3 grams not including the propellers and the radio receiver. The thickness of the bottom plate is 3 mm, the thickness of the top plate is 2 mm and the bottom plate is a unibody plate which means if you break an arm you're going to need to replace the entire bottom plate. The wheelbase of the TS-130 is about 135 mm, the distance between the front two motors and also between the back ones is about 100 mm and the distance between the front two motors and the back ones is about 90 mm. Since this is the plug and play version, it doesn't come with any ready receiver, so you will have to provide your own one. It already comes pre-configured to work with SBUS, so all you have to do is to connect your SBUS receiver to this port over here. The right pin is the ground, then we have plus 5 volts, and then SBUS in. The left pin, which is not connected, is plus 3.3 volts. Now after mounting an FRSky RXSR receiver, the next thing I'm going to do is to update the flight controller to the latest Betaflight version, since it comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.1.7 which is a little bit outdated. Then I'm going to go over Betaflight configuration and then head outdoors and test it out. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
Overall, after flying the Ishin Wizard DS-130, I can tell you that it performed better than I expected and I'm really impressed with the performance of these motors. They are both powerful and efficient and I could get about 3 minutes of flying time using the CNHL 650mAh 4S battery, which in my opinion is the best option out of the batteries I tested. There is however a big problem with the Wizard DS-130 and it is its frame. Even though it looks kind of cool, the problem in a major crash, the all-in-one stack is probably going to take the hit. It is connected using the pins on the center and I don't really think it's going to survive a major crash because these parts are exposed, it's going to take the hit and probably it is going to be destroyed. So this quadcopter might be a good option for an owner of a TS215 if you want to complete the set. But what I recommend to do if you already have this quadcopter is to get an XJB145 frame which is not really expensive and if you're going to break this frame you can just move all the parts to the new frame and if you're in the market for a new 3 inch quadcopter and you don't care about the design I think that the AGLRC XJB145 plug and play quadcopter is going to be a better option even though it costs $20 more. In addition, I also understood why you're getting a bag of screws. The reason for that is that I lost two of the screws after the first flight. So what I recommend to do is to get yourself some Loctite, unscrew all the screws, especially from the center, put some Loctite and then put them back. Otherwise, you're going to lose all the screws sooner or later. Now, don't get me wrong, I still like this quadcopter, however, you have to think for the long run and if you're going to enjoy it for a few flights, it's not going to justify its price. So, if you already have it and you don't want to get an extra frame, do yourself a favor and just make sure to protect the center part because this is very important. In addition, do not forget to secure the battery leads using a zip tie to the quadcopter, otherwise, in case of a crash, they might be pulled off and then it's going to destroy the battery pads of the ESC. And finally, try to get the antenna out of the propellers. Maybe you can use a zip tie over here. Otherwise, it might be hit by the propellers. So that was my review of the Ishin Wizard TS-130. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comments section down below. 
Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.